Hi, this is Ariane with Sociable Art, and today we're going to paint Venice. This is a painting that was inspired by a scarf, actually, that my mom got for me. And it's going to be kind of expressionistic. So it's going to have really bright colors and not realistic colors, though you can do it with realistic colors. I'm just going to show you how to paint it the way that I did. But fe please feel free to change anything up. What I've done here is I have used a paint pen, a permanent paint pen, to uh, sketch on these buildings. And I'm gonna put this the paint over the, um, and not over the black, but around it. It's like I've created my own uh, paint by numbers. And you can order a pre-sketched canvas from me um, for local delivery or shipment. And also I have uh, pre-printed uh, nine by 12 sheets that that really make it a no-brainer and make it really easy. And the um, address for, for the uh, website for ordering is along the bottom. On the back of the canvas, I have put kind of a color mixing guide for you. And I'm gonna put all of this information along the bottom of the screen, but just to go over it really quickly, these are the basic colors that I used. Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue, Primary Red, primary yellow, white, black, magenta, and turquoise. Now, you don't have to have all of these colors in your paint set. Um, it's just, I like to buy magenta rather than try to mix it, and I like to buy turquoise rather than mix it because to get the really bright, brilliant colors, it's sometimes just easier to buy it. Some of the colors I have mixed, and I put over here the mixing guide, and for instance, you're gonna have to mix purple. And there's many different ways to mix purple. You can just do blue and red. I crossed out red because in this painting, that, that uh, purple that you would get from mixing blue and red is too dark for what I'm going for. So if you do blue with the magenta, you'll get a brighter, uh, lighter shade of purple. Um, deep orange, which is kind of an odd orange that I have here. It's because I added a little bit of brown to it. And then I just wanted to give it, I don't know, just needed a little pink too. So I did a little pink, which I show you down here how to mix. The yellow I'm using, I put a teeny weeny touch of that burnt kind of orange color into it to get it dulled down a little bit. Olive green, you mix blue and yellow to get green. And then you add a little of that burnt orange and you get that color pink, I use the magenta and white, or red and white. And so that's basically the colors that we're using. And here is the canvas. What you can do is just sketch it on with pencil and use black paint to do your outlining. And so if you wanna pause the video and just do some outlining with the black paint, you can do that. And what I'm going to do next, though, is start filling in the basic colors. There's going to be some layering in this painting. So at first, we're just going to do some solid filling in. For instance, this is going to seem odd, but the sky, I want to fill in with that burnt orange color that I mixed. And I've got a pinker shade of it here, too. And so here's the pinker shade of that burnt orange. And I'm going to show you the other one, too. And I'm using like a a square medium brush, but I have a 14, I um, mean, uh, 11 by 14 canvas. If you're using the bigger 16 by 20, you might want to use the big brush, biggest brush you can use for the area. So here's the deeper shade of orange. So there's that pink or orange, and then there's this deeper shade. I just want to show you a comparison between the two. It doesn't really matter which you use at this point. I'm gonna use the deeper orange to fill in the sky. And you see, I'm going up to the black and in some areas, I'm actually covering it a little. There's going, going to be a roof here. So you see this little scroll work here? I am not gonna really go below that with this color. And you can either kind of go around it or you can go over it because you can still see the black if you go over it because this color is not opaque enough usually to cover that. As for brush strokes, doesn't matter a whole lot which direction because we're going to put some other shades on top of this. But you could do, you know, mostly vertical. And I'm gonna cut, paint the sides of my canvas as well. I like to do that and have it painted all the way around. Anytime my brush touches the side, I wrap the color around the side so that 
You wouldn't have to frame this if you don't want to. You can just hang it on the wall how it is. Make sure um, that you mix enough of your color so that you don't run out. And this painting doesn't matter quite as much uh, because of us doing the layering, but other times in your painting you run out, with, out of that color, it's very hard to mix that same exact color again. So you would notice the difference. And for this painting, what I did, partially because I'm um, videotaping me painting, I mixed all my colors in advance. Um, and that's, I don't know, it's, it makes it a, a lot more carefree if you do that. So you might pause in the beginning and just um, mix the olive and the pink and um, the orange and just have them all ready. Seems kind of odd having this kind of red sky, but it's going to look good, I promise. There will just be little bits of this color showing through when we're done doing a layering. So I'm going to um, pause and kind of do this next steps in fast motion on the um, film so that you don't have to be bored with watching me fill in every single little bit. But let me just tell you what I'm going to do. So I filled in this orange color here and then I'm gonna fill in these buildings with solid colors, which are just the base coats. And so you can see me doing that in fast frame and you'll know which, which colors go where. Um, there's gonna be some red in some of these buildings and um, then some a lighter orange and then we'll do the water too. So I'm gonna do that fast frame. So I'm gonna pause for one second. Okay, so I've got all the base colors in, and just to go over what I just did, I have the deep orange, uh, burnt orange, almost red in the sky. I have it in some of these buildings, and you can just kind of copy where I've got it, or do it your own way. And then on two of these buildings, more of a salmon color, which is this uh, orange color mixed with some of the yellow and white and you could even put a little pink in there if you want to it's kind of like a salmon color or a lighter shade of your orange and then um, i have a pink roof and i have some of the turquoise all along the roof line and the brown that i used in the roofs is um it's the, the dark brown that you have in the palette, but then I also kind of lightened it and warmed it up a little bit with a little bit of yellow. I just wanted to tell you that so that if you just weren't, if you just use the straight burnt umber, you would not get um, quite the same color as what I got there. So I just wanted to let you know that. And I'm just putting a second coat on um, some of these areas because I used some water and it's a little bit thinner than I want it to be. I want it to be pretty solid color. And as you're filling in this, uh, all the um, backgrounds on these buildings, you could uh, either go around the windows like I did here, and then they'll stay nice and dark and black, or you can just go over them, which is much easier, and then return to them later to paint, make some of them dark with black paint. I just find it a lot easier to do it uh, that way than, you know, than to sit there and go around every single one of them. It would take a very long time to do that. But if you have the time, you can do that if you'd like to. Then this building over here, this is straight uh, ultramarine blue. And then down here in the water, 
I kind of alternated between turquoise and the purple shade that I mixed. And then at the very lowest part, there's the yellow. And I went ahead and put some of this orange in with it already, but you don't have to do that. Just yellow and then your purples and your blue. Um, I kind of cheated a little and went ahead and started adding some other colors or, you know, I, I'm going to do that up here too, but so that's basically what it looks like. And I did do a little of the detail. I put the brown into the boats and on the doors and then filled, these are supposed to be three little abstract kind of figures here. And so I put some colors on those as well. And then this is the fun part. If you ask me, we're going to start adding the second layer of colors. And so in the sky, um, the sky is going to be kind of a light orange color, maybe at sunset. So I'm going to start with that, the burnt orange that I created, but I'm going to add um, some yellow and white to it so that it becomes a nice lighter shade. So white and yellow added to the burnt orange. And if, it, if I don't get it to be orange enough, I think, you know, what I might do is just mix a new shade of orange. So red and yellow mixed together. And once I get a nice shade of orange, then I can uh, just add some white to it or add some of this shade into it. Dull it down a little bit really want to be more orange so I'm going to take some of it and add I mean more yellow to it okay so I've got the kind of orange that I want sometimes it's just hit or miss you just got to keep mixing until you get it right and what I always say is if you start with a color and you really don't like the way it's going you need to abandon that don't try to mix it to the right color because you'll just end up with a ton of the wrong color so I've mixed a shade of orange I like over here, but it's still um, too dark. So then I need to just add white to the color that I like. I want it to be nice and light. And really I won't know if it's light enough until I put it on the canvas and see how it's showing up on here. Okay, I do like that. And so this, we're not just gonna cover the sky because then what would have been the point of putting this uh, base coat on? We're just going to cover most of it and then leave some of the red peeking out in some areas. And I didn't mention this, but one thing I want you to make sure of is that there's, we don't want any canvas peeking through, no little white areas peeking through. So make sure that you fill all those in. And I do want to pay attention to brush strokes when I'm doing this area. Um, and I want most of them to be kind of vertical. And to kind of go around the shapes as well. I want to leave some red areas. It's kind of hard to do. You, you don't want to cover it all up. And you can if you want to. But I just want this to look uh, very unusual and just want some some of that red to show through. So I'm just leaving kind of random areas of red. And sometimes I'll go right up to this, to the building and sometimes I'll leave some of the red showing. And I know this will drive some people crazy who are really uh, anal about detail. They're like, oh no, we have to cover that in. But I, I just want it to look this way. It just gives a lot of interest to the sky, but it is your painting, so do it the way that you want to do it. And I will go back eventually and I will have some areas that are really solid this color as it dries, I'll go back and make some of it very solid. I'm gonna do some horizontal areas up here. So there's gonna be some streaks in the sky over here that I think will look kind of like, resemble the idea of clouds. Yeah, 
in a very loose way. Don't worry, we can go back to, with our uh, black at the end and really uh, get those black areas to stand out. So don't worry if you covered them up, that was the idea. Just making some of the areas more solid. And you can go back later and really um, add another coat and so that it's very opaque and you don't see much of the red. Wrapping the paint around the sides. Okay. And any place else I need it. I might put just a little bit of this color into some of these buildings too, just for fun. You can do this any color that we switch to, you can think to add it someplace else in the painting. So the colors are just kind of everywhere. and that everything is sort of balanced. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, move to these, uh, the burnt orange buildings. And I want to put some of the pink shade on the bottom half of the buildings. Again, in the same way, way where I cover some of the uh, color, but then I leave some of it showing as well. And these brush strokes can go in any direction and in multiple directions. Try to be very loose with your brush strokes. Don't overthink it. This is supposed to be fun and there is certainly not a right way to do this. In fact, I would love it if you would do it completely differently and then send me a picture of how you envisioned this and how you did it differently. That would make me very happy because that's what creativity is all about. So let's see, I want to do the same thing on the bottom of this similar building. Kind of wishing my pink was a little brighter. Might add a little more of the magenta into it. Oh, I just realized I forgot this roof over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in with this pink. I don't know how I forgot that, I didn't notice it. Just hit 
put all this right here. And then I think that I'm gonna add some of this pink. I'm turning my brush sideways so I have a thin edge to it and I'm just gonna add a little bit into the water here. Now I am using, as I always mention, I'm using student grade acrylics so I don't get a lot of opaqueness and I don't get a lot of bold pigment because of the quality or the lack of quality of this paint. Um, so if you bought a more expensive, nicer acrylic, you could probably get some deeper, deeper shades here, something brighter, more brilliant. And so what I'm doing is kind of zigging, zagging some lines through here. That is an art term, zigging, zagging. Well, at least it is in my book because some of these colors would reflect onto the water. So I'm just a little bit over here. Okay, I wish some of these were a little bit deeper in pigment. Maybe a little down here. Down at the very bottom, I just added some of the pink so that'll pull that down. Okay. Then I'm going to switch to the magenta. And I can't recall, I think I put a little white in with this magenta. I don't think I used it straight. So I ended up with this color. And I'm just gonna put it on top of this pink. I don't wanna have much water in my brush. So I don't wanna lose any of the deepness of color. Not trying to cover all the pink, just doing this as like an accent. I'll put some over here on the bottom of this building. And then this color, you're not gonna see it very well, but it's going to be on top of some areas on this orangey building as well. And then on top of this roof. And then this bright color needs to be in the water as well. I'll put it in the same areas where I did the lighter pink. It goes along with that color. Alright, now to our lighter orange buildings. On those, I want to use my light yellow, which I no longer have. I need to recreate that. Okay, so I've got my light yellow, which has just a touch of that orange in it so that it won't be quite so bright. And then I'm gonna put that on this building, leaving some of that other orange underneath showing. Don't 
Don't worry, we can go back to the black and fill it back in. Then um, this building, I'm just putting little accents above where there might be windows here. You could use a smaller brush and do this a little more carefully, but I just want it to just be the idea of, I don't know what you call those, lintels? I'm not sure, those little um, stone areas above windows. This building is going to have a lot of this yellow, too. Don't forget, leave some of that orange showing. This will be a true test for some of you. more of it, more of this solid yellow down here. And then this building over here as well will have that yellow. And there will be a little yellow reflection in the water. And over here on this building, you can put a little too, just because I think we need to balance out and have some there. And a little bit in the water here. Maybe put some back in here. why, but I think there should be something here. Maybe just a little bit of this into the sky as well. It's like a fiery sunset. That's what I'm thinking of it as. A fiery expressionistic Sunset. A little more of this yellow down here. This, some of this yellow is going to be the backdrop for, there's going to be some like, um, the idea of some greenery down here. We want to have some of this down here too as a, like a backdrop. Make it a little more yellow. Okay, let me hit this highlight over here on the water a little again. So 
So the next thing to add will be the green shades. And I created this olive green. And again, that's taking the orange, um, well, taking green and mixing a little of that burnt orange in with it until you get a shade that you like of the olive green. And my green is acting a little too watered down. Might need to get a second coat on some of these areas because I really want it to show as green. So I'll pause it in a minute and I'll add a second coat to areas too, but I just want to show you where all the green goes. Gonna be some on this building, not covering, just like an accent of this color. A lot of it right here. Just a little up here. Maybe a window is there in green. Maybe it's a window with a curtain in it. And then there's gotta be some over here too on this blue building. Oh, I like that. I like that, how it shows up on there. And then on this building as well, on a little bit on the top of the building, the second story and third. And a little bit on this one as well. Now they're also, I like for these windows on this building to be this green shade too. You might need to do a second coat to really make it show up against that red. But here we go. And then all this, there's gonna be a lot of this green down here. It's, you know, some sort of greenery, but we don't want it to sit there and look, you know, exactly like little bushes or trees. It's just kind of strokes of green. With some of the other colors showing through. Okay, so I'm gonna go back now and I'm going to um, do some fill-in of some of the colors and make them deeper by putting a second coat on some of them. And um, also, this you can also start to add like some accent colors. Like um, there might be some turquoise in, you know, like in this building, just really bright, brilliant areas of turquoise that help it kind of just you know, pop out of there. And then it, like in this area, um, I might put some purple so it's not just one solid color. We don't, we don't want it to just be one color. Same thing with that one. And there can be purple in some of the windows, like on some of the black windows on this building. Oh, that looks really good. So I'm going to put that over here too. And let's see, a little bit more on that. And on, maybe on the, the roof, you could have a little bit of that purple, just a little. I think I want to put some of that turquoise. So these are just accents that you can add anywhere, really. 
anywhere that you want. I like to have some of those windows be turquoise. And I'm just adding a little more, bit more turquoise accent in the water. And we'll put an accent on the boat. Lots of things you can do. Just uh, play around with it. And so I'm going to go in and I'm going to deepen some of these colors by adding a second coat and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've gone through and I've added a second coat to some of my colors on here so they're a little brighter. Uh, but the other thing I, I wanted to do is go back to that burnt orange that's in the background here. And then some of the areas that are showing through, I just wanted to add a second coat to and just add a little, I'm not, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, but I'm just going back. Oops, that, that had a little white in it for some reason. Don't want that in there. Um, and I'm just going in and just kind of changing the shape of them by, by going over them a little bit and maybe adding just a little bit to them. So... Filling that in, I just, I just I, uh, want to change the shape of some of them so they're not squared off. or, And then I just want to have some more little accents in the sky. And just some over here. And then I'm gonna go back and add the black back in and I, I wanted to show you that as well. Okay, so um, in some of the areas I covered my black and I want it to show up um, more darkly. So I can use the medium brush and just use the edge of it or I can use a liner brush if I want to be more detailed. I don't want to go back and outline everything that's black but I just want to have um, some of the areas be more black and particularly let's see an area in here and maybe some of the area along here along the water just to make it just a little more dramatic. some blacker areas, more contrast. And definitely don't want any canvas showing anywhere. So anywhere you have canvas showing, you wanna cover that up with some color. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just kinda of looking at the painting. It's a really good idea to step back and look at it and see where does it need something. Especially when you're adding these dark areas, you might want to step back occasionally and see when it is enough and when to stop. And I still want to keep it, you know, really sketchy looking, you know, <laughs> that's not quite the right word, but um, I want it to look like it has been sketched. Let's put it that way. And if you uh, liked yours without adding more black, 
um, you definitely don't need to do this step. If you think you just, if you just want it to be those bright colors showing up, you can leave it just the way it was. Definitely want these doors to show up. And we do need some, a little bit of black reflections in the water. I don't think I've got those. There's a, the reflection of this uh, black line on the building is definitely here in the water. here. I want that door to show up. Just a black area here. I want these windows to show up again. These ones down here too. I love that this uh, painting is so loose and you know there's no right or wrong to it because you, you're not doing it exactly realistically and it really takes some of the pressure off. back into this roof. And I definitely want to get that back in, but I think I'll, I'll use the liner brush for that. If your paint's too thick, just add a little water to it. and it'll flow a lot better for you. Definitely the lines between the buildings could use, I think, some blackness and maybe under this boat here, shadows in front of these buildings, definitely by this boat, because it makes the boat stand out more too. roof line. All right. Oh, make sure there's some darkness around these figures so they stand up out. Black into the water. Oh, 
right. These windows may be the only other thing that I want to do. Let's add just a little more definition a couple places. Almost done. Okay, now I want to use the liner brush to do that little flourish up here on this roof. So I cut this liner brush, get it a little damp, and then use the black paint. Make sure it's not, it doesn't have any drips. I don't want it to be a perfect you know, little scroll work because this is all kind of you know, expressionistic, so I don't want one thing to be, you know, perfectly stand out, like it has a lot of detail when nothing else does. And then just check, make sure that you don't have um, any white canvas showing through. If you do, you need to put color in it. And I think this uh, shadow, needs just a little bit um, some color to break it up just a little. There, I like that better. You can add as many of these little lines into the water as you want. And when you're, or if you're done, you feel done, you look at it, you're like, I'm pretty satisfied with that, then it is done and you don't need to do any more. Sometimes you keep going a little bit too long and then you end up uh, kind of messing up what you liked before, so know when to quit. As I say, as I keep on painting. So the only th other thing I'm gonna do is sign my name. I'm gonna check and paint the bottom to check the sides, make sure, that, sure they're all painted. Um, thanks for painting with me. If you enjoyed this, please um, subscribe. It's free to subscribe and like the video, it helps me a lot. Um, and you know, just follow me on YouTube so I can keep on bringing you uh, more videos in the future. And if you have suggestions for paintings of mine that you'd like to see me paint, um, just contact me and I'm on sociableart.com. You can use the contact us link on there. And also you can order printed canvas sheets of this painting and others. Um, and also pre-sketched canvases if you're local to the area, if you'd like them shipped. And it's sociableart.com. And I'm Arianne. Thanks for watching. Bye.